Hello, hello, Thais here from ThaisSky.com. I want to talk today about the role that mindset plays in our overall self-development and spiritualization process. Uh, I know that there is a lot and a lot of draw towards the idea that mindset is everything. That if you uh, truly have the right thoughts, if you truly believe those thoughts, then you can actually create whatever it is that you want. And so the only thing that's stopping you from having what you want is the right mindset. If you don't have enough money right now, it's probably because of your mindset. Mindset. If you don't have the relationship that you want, it's probably because you don't have the right mindset. Mindset seems to be this huge, huge, con like huge, huge answer to all of our problems. And that the more we focus on just having the right mindset and that our thoughts create our reality, then all of our dreams will come true. And yet, I have seen in my life how that often falls short. I fell into the mindset camp for a very long time, deeply believing that the only thing that was stopping me from being successful was my mindset. And so I spent a lot of money and a lot of time focusing on creating the right thoughts, focusing on believing myself through my rational brain, thinking and thinking and praying and thinking and mindsetting my way into success. And it literally never worked for me. It never worked for me. So I want to dive a little bit into why it didn't work and specifically what about our autonomy and our brain function that doesn't actually allow mindset to work, what works instead, and what the right role mindset plays in our self-development. Because I'm not here to paint some broad strokes that mindset in and of itself is absolutely useless. There is a role for mindset. It just plays a very tiny one in the grand scheme of the conversation. So let's talk about our brain and how our brain is cultivated, how our brain was created. The first part of our brain that was developed was developed before we were even born in this world, and that is our reptilian brain, which includes the brain stem and the cerebellum. And the, the reptilian brain plays the function of survival. It's what lets us know that we're hungry. It's what lets us know that we're in danger. It activates the fight-flight response. Our reptilian brain is absolutely crucial to our survival, as you can imagine. Once we're born, we start to cultivate the mammalian brain, or the limbic system, which includes the hippocampus, it includes the amygdala, and the limbic brain is responsible for our emotions, and it's responsible for our memory. Together, the mammalian and reptilian brain create the unconscious or emotional brain. The rest of our brain was cultivated and developed as we got older and older, and that is our neocortex. That's our frontal lobes. It's like the big juicy stuff that we associate as our brain. And this shit is what allows us humans to be so fucking magical. It's what gives us our rational thinking. Our rational? Yeah, rational thinking. It's what gives us our capacity to do calculations that exceed computers. This is where we have seen again and again that humans far surpass our, uh, uh, and the other animals on the planet, okay? It's with our rational thing, brain. Now, obviously, the rational brain is where our conscious thoughts come from. So when we're talking about mindset, we're talking about uh, changing our rational brain. Here's the problem. The majority of our decision-making skills, the majority of our, uh, like 20% of our decisions are made consciously. That means 80% of our decisions are made in an unconscious capacity based on our mammalian and reptilian brain, which was developed all in our childhood. And so the, the idea that we have autonomy, the fact that we have freedom to create our reality is actually very much hindered on what is going on in our unconscious brain. Psychologists agree that at best, we are only conscious of about 15% of our behaviors and intentions. That means, let's be honest here, the majority of the time, we're not autonomous humans being. We're totally running our lives based on an unconscious brain. And so then it's no wonder that we do all this mindset work, and yet we still get failing results again and again and again. It's because mindset only plays a small role. The majority of our time doing self-development work has to be looking at our unconscious brain. Now, luckily, uh, the system that I operate in, the 
the school that I reside in is the school of spiritual psychology that tells us how to use spiritual principles like mindfulness and self-acceptance, self-awareness, and uh, our purpose and our capacity to be in that why and to be connected to something greater than ourselves, how that spiritual understanding plays into our psychology, into our understanding of the human brain and our understanding of human behavior. When we put these two schools together, we get to really start to unearth how our childhood trauma, how our childhood patterns, how our emotional wounding continues to play out into adulthood through repeated patterns, repeated results, repeated experiences, right? And so now we have a tool that I use with my clients to get them into a deeper understanding of how their brain works so that they take it to then create a different life. What's really cool about using the tool of spiritual psychology and what I've seen again and again and again in my life over the past 10 years of doing this work, as well as in the lives of my clients, is that you don't actually have to think differently. You just are differently. Right? There's a difference between mentalizing an idea, like, oh, I know I should do this, versus actually internalizing it, which is you actually just do this. Instead of saying, I need to forgive this person, you just naturally experience forgiveness when you do the healing work behind it, behind the wound. This is what's so cool about the work that I get to do with my clients, is that I'm actually offering them a holistic self-development experience where they get to use their deep desire to be connected to something bigger than themselves, their spirituality, with their well-being. I'm telling you, focusing only on mindset is not going to take you very far. So if you focus on mindset up to this point and you've seen that it doesn't work, where it takes you like it's like a, like a sputtering train, like it takes you to a certain point and then it goes back again and then it takes you to a certain point and then it takes you right back again. And people tell you, oh, it's because you're self-sabotaging or self-limiting or you're upper limiting. And then you think, oh, the more mindset is going to change that. It's not. It just doesn't work that way. And that's okay. See if you can experience a little bit of self-compassion. Because it's very easy to fall into the school of thinking. I know. I've been there. And I think the one of the main reasons why we fall so easily into this idea that mindset holds all the power is because we love the idea that we get to control our lives. Because we are all thirsty for control based on a very unpredictable and unreliable childhood. When we experience trauma as child children, and by the way, we've all experienced to a certain extent trauma in our childhood, we cultivate an experience of feeling unsafe in our body and in our lives. And so, of course, we're going to look for ways to control our external circumstances so that we can feel safe. And one of the ways that we're told to do this is through controlling our thoughts. It sounds so tantalizing because it keeps us safe. The problem is we can't control our lives. And this idea that our thoughts control our reality is honestly bullshit because let's be honest here. We live in a social system. We live in an environment where we are affected by other people's beliefs and other people's behaviors. We don't live in a vacuum. We can't create our reality because our reality is very much created for us based on our oppressional systems that we currently live in. And so we got to really, really look at like, yes, we do have control over our lives. Like, yes, we get to decide how we respond, but it's not going to be through our rational brain and rationalization and justifications. It's going to be by doing the deeper work of experiencing our emotions, of getting grounded in our body and of digging into some deeper work. I know it's a little bit daunting. I know it feels a little bit overwhelming to, to get that safety blanket pulled out from underneath you. But let me tell you, there's nothing more liberating than being a different person without even having to, to think about it. There's nothing more liberating than feeling like nothing outside of you can shake you because you've truly found a home within yourself. There's literally nothing more liberating than being able to rise up and speak your truth and put yourself out there without even having to worry about what people are saying. Not because you developed this mask where you don't care what people are saying, but really you do but because you just genuinely understand your role in life. And that is what I can offer with spiritual psychology. Thank you all so much for listening. I'll talk to you soon.